Lesson 6.2, page 300 of your book, Radicals and Rational Exponents. In this lesson, you will learn how to find the root of a base. You will learn how to evaluate expressions with rational exponents. Remember, earlier in the year, rational means fractional, basically. And we'll learn how to solve real life problems involving rational exponents. So this first portion of the video, probably up to here, is going to cover the symbolism. The symbolism looks complicated, but it's really easy. You just have to, you have to absorb the symbolism, but you're being asked to do easy things. So let's talk about finding the root of a base. You can extend the concept of square root to other types of roots. So let's review what a square root is. A square root, for example, the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is asking you what times itself gets you 16. And I'm hoping you're thinking, well, Mr. Lomansky, it's 4. The square root of 16 is 4. Okay. Now, there are other roots other than just square roots. A square root means what times itself gives you that base. Again, in this case, it's 4. A cube root, 2 is the cube root of 8 because 2 cubed is 8. So in other words, what does that mean? It means if I see this symbolism, let me highlight it, this is asking you the cube root of 8. In other words, what times itself times itself would give you 8? Well, let's think. Does 1 times 1 times 1 give you 8? No. What about 2 times 2 times 2? Well, let me think. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Yeah, so the cube root of 8 is 2. You have to realize that in this lesson, this is going to be, a, this is going to be no calculator stuff. You're not going to get decimal and weird answers. It's all going to be whole amounts. But we have to know what this is asking. This is asking for the cube root of 8. What times itself times itself gives me 8? Okay. 3 is the fourth root of 81. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, so if you look here, where I highlight it again, this statement is asking the fourth root of 81, which means what times itself times itself times itself would give me 81? Let's check. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is certainly not 81. What about 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? And no, that's 16. Let's try 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 more is 27, 27 times 3 is 81, so there you go. The cube root, the, I misspoke, the fourth root I meant to say of 81 is 3. That's just finding roots. Now this next part is going to sound terrible, but it's saying something really simple. In general, for an integer n greater than 1, if b to the n equals a, then b is the nth root of a. So you might be thinking, what? Okay, here's what that's saying. So if I have this statement, if I want the third root of a, of 8, the answer to that, the answer to this would be what base to the third power gives me 8? So I'm, again, I'm thinking, uh, does 1 times 1 times 1 give me 8? No. What about 2 times 2 times 2? Yes. So that's all this statement is saying. Okay, exactly what I was saying on the previous slide. Okay. Um, the, an nth root of A is written as in that symbolism where the expression is called the radical and n is the index. So again, the, the variables make it abstract. Let me give you a concrete example. All right. The third root of 125 would look like this. The number 3 is called the index, and this little check mark thing is called the radical. Now, the third root of 125, let's think, what is it? Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what unknown amount to the third power gives me 125. That's what this statement is saying. So let's try 1 times 1 times 1, isn't it? What about 2 times 2 times 2? No. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. That's not right. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. That's not it. 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. So the third root of 125 is 5. Okay. 
you can also write a root as a power. Okay, so let's talk about that. I can write this as a power. Here's how you would write it. You would write it 125 is the base. And then I have two numbers I'm going to highlight. First power, third root. So the way you write that as, a, as an exponent, it's 125 to the first power, but I have the third root. You write 125 to the one-third power. Okay? This and this are saying the same thing. Let me do one more just so you can see it. If I had the third root of 27, that would be the same thing as 27 to the one-third power. My power is a 1 and my root is a 3. That's what all of this up here is trying to tell you. So again, it looks like, holy smokes, are they trying to give me something really complex? And it's not. It's just, do you understand the symbolism? Let's talk about some properties of the roots of A. This first statement is just trying to tell you that if you have an odd root, you're going to get one answer. And that's it, as one answer. Okay? So, for example, if I have the cube root of 27, I'm trying to figure out what times what to the third power would be 27? Well, it would be one answer. It's 3. However, if you have an even root, okay, like square root, the square root of 4, here was an even root, square root 4 is 2, but wouldn't the square root of 4 also give you negative 2? Think about it. Square root means some number squared equals 4. Well, there's two answers to that. 2 squared would be 4, but so would negative 2 squared. There's two real roots if we have an even number here, all right? Uh, the third statement, let me erase this out of the way so it's not, ah, shoot. The third statement, um, if I have, if I have a base of zero, the nth root of that is 0. It doesn't matter what it is. If I take the square root of 0 or the nth root is, or the third root, fourth root, any, I'm asking what times itself so many times is going to be 0. Well, that's going to be 0 every time. So again, one answer. And then finally, if I have an even power here, but there's a negative value in here, that has no real answers, no real solutions to it. Now, in this in, in reality, when you have bases, the bases could be negative or positive. We are going to work with positive um, bases or negative bases that would give us real answers. We are, there are also things called imaginary numbers, but you're going to get to those in a future course. So we're not going to be working with things that will give us imaginary answers, which means on your calculator, if you typed it in, it, gives you an, it would give you an error message. That you will study in Algebra 2. So now that we got all the symbolism out of the way, I think that we're to the easy part of the video, just actually using this to work some of these out. Okay, so let's find the, let's find roots. So for here, find the indicated real nth root of A. So when I see this, this is saying I have the third root of negative 27. So I'm thinking, what times it, so in other words, let me write this down. What to the third power would give me negative 27? Well, it's not negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. It's not negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That would get me negative 8. It's negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9, times negative 3 again, which is negative 27. The third root of negative 27 is negative 3. Okay? Here, this is asking me to find the fourth root of 16. Well, so in other words, what number to the fourth power would get me 16 is the question. It's not 1 because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is not 16. What about 2? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. The fourth root of 16 is 2. So again, I'm not asking for anything hard here, but you see there's some mental math with it, okay? 
I would like you to pause the video. You try numbers one and two. And I'm back. You should have gotten for number one the third root of negative 125 is negative 5, and the sixth root of 64 is 2. In other words, 2 to the sixth power would get you 64. So the base is 2. So we're going to continue here, just using what we've learned from that first eight minutes of the video, evaluating expressions with rational exponents, okay? Recall that radicals indicate a positive square root of A. Likewise, an nth root is an even index, indicates a positive nth root of A, okay? So um, that sounds complicated. This is all they're saying. So for part A, maybe it's just easier to show it. For A, okay, um, I have the third root of negative 8. So this is asking me, what number to the third power would give me negative 8? Well, it can't be negative 1 because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 doesn't get me that. Let's try negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, so my answer is negative 2. Or here, I have the negative cube root of 8. So I'm being asked, let's focus here first. I'm trying to figure out what number to the third power would get me 8. Well. It's not 1 times 1 times 1, but what about 2? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. It's 2. The negative in front means the answer is negative 2. Here, 16 to the 1 fourth power is the same thing as the fourth root of 16. So I'm being asked, what number to the fourth power is 16? Well, it's not 1 because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is not 16, but what about 2? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Answer is 2. Okay? Here, um, I, this is going to be an imaginary answer because when I have that, it means the fourth root of negative 16. There's no number that I can multiply four times together and get negative 16. Think, if, if I try a positive, four positives multiplied out would get me a positive. And four negatives multiplied together would get me a positive. There's no way I can calculate that. So that's an imaginary answer. It's not a real answer. Okay? So let's talk about rational exponents. So rational, that means fractional, basically. Rational numbers can be written as a fraction. So fractional exponents. So when you see this rule is just saying, I don't even know if I want to read it. It sounds super complicated, but it's super easy. When I have 27 to the 2 thirds power, here's all that means. I have second power third root. Okay? The easiest way to calculate this is in this order. I'll do it and color code it. We'll do the root first, power second. So let's do the root first. I need to know end of the third power would get me 27. Well, what times itself times itself gives me 27? Let's see. It's not 1 times 1 times 1, 2 times 2 times 2. No. What about 3? 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So the third root of 27 would give me 3. And then I have to square the 3. The answer to this is 9. Okay? So let's try that on these. So here, 16 to the 3 quarter power means this. I have the fourth root of 16. So what number to the fourth power is 16? Well, it's 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So the fourth root of 16 gives me 2, and then I have to third power the 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That's why they're getting 8. 27 to the four thirds power would be the third root of 27 to the fourth power. Now, we want to do the root first. That's the easiest thing. So what's the third root of 27? In other words, what times itself times itself is 27? That's 3. And then I've got to take the fourth power of 3. That should be 81. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. Okay, I would like you to pause the video real quick and you try these. And I'm back, and here would be the answers to 3 through 6. If you aren't figuring those out without a calculator, you're like, I can't get it, 
in class tomorrow, stop and say, hey, we need to go through those so we can see how we're getting them on paper. Now, when you solve real life questions regarding this, these would definitely be calculator questions. What we covered up to this point would be no calculator stuff. This would be calculator permitted. So, for these questions, these are simply like here, they have an equation. Now, do you notice why it's part of the lesson? We have fractional exponents and things that you've learned about now. So these mean that we have roots in this problem. So they have a formula for radius where volume is V. Um, R, little r stands for the radius. And we want to find the radius of a beach ball to the nearest foot. So this beach ball, you notice its volume is 113. So they're going to put 113 in for volume. We'll use 3.14 for pi. And all it's a matter of doing is getting this in our calculator. So let's make sure we know how to do that. Got to type it in just the way you see it. Remember, when you have a fraction, use parentheses. So let's type uh, 339 divided by 12.56 in parentheses to the one-third power in our calculator. We'll do that together. So we're going to do open parenthesis 339 divided by 12.56. Okay, now here's my power key. It's, the, it's called the carrot key, this little arrow up key, raised to the one-third power. Now make sure you put one-third power in parentheses, press enter, and it should be matching what the book has. Now it says here, 2.9996, whatever. The book said it's about 3. Okay, so again, you can use your calculator on these. And it's likewise in this question, solving another real life problem. To calculate annual inflation, R, of an item that increases in value from P to F over a period of N years, you can use this equation. Okay, so find the annual inflation rate to the nearest tenth of a percent of a house that increases in value from there's P, there's F, you notice they're writing those in down here for P and F, over a period of five years, five goes in for N, that's why they have the one-fifth power. So let's go ahead and type this in our calculator to make sure we're getting that. So open parentheses 23500 divided by the 200,000 close parentheses after that, we want to raise this to the one-fifth power. I'm going to press enter on this and then I'll subtract one and you can see that's matching what the book has. So it's about a 3.3% inflation because this is written as a decimal so I got to move my decimal two over. So it's about a 3.3% inflation rate. I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.